Okay, so now that we've explored surface geometry, we want to look at how we can divide the surface up into smaller parts. So um, if we look at the parameter space, right, we know that the numerical description uh, of that parameter space is based on a two-dimensional domain, right? Uh, so we've kind of ha we have an introduction to this already. Um, that two-dimensional domain is composed of two one-dimensional domains, each of which are defined by their numeric extremes. We can think about that as a min and max, right? The minimum and maximum value describing that space in U and D, uh, the U and D dimensions. All right, so what that means is that we can use um, sub-segments of that two-dimensional space, which abstractly here are represented on the left as a kind of grid. Uh, so each one of those uh, rectangles here being a kind of sub-segment of the two-dimensional domain. We can use those as a way to define what part of the corresponding surface, which has the same parameter space, we want to isolate, right? So the key here is that no matter what shape we see um, as the result of our surface creation uh, action, it's always going to be relative to this two-dimensional space um, defined by U and V, and the extents of which are defined by the two-dimensional numeric domain. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a surface, uh, we're going to create one in uh, Rhino, and then we're going to break it up into smaller surfaces, uh, which we'll call now panels. Okay, so let's bounce back over to Rhino. And if you have the file that we gave you open, um, you can turn on layer 1-2. We're going to be using that. We're going to perspective view. You should see a series of curve profiles, right? And those curve, curve profiles are going to help us uh, start our file uh, to create a surface by a loft operation instead of um, one of the more primitive operations that we are using before. So this is what we're going to do. This is all we have to do to create uh, our panels here. It's a very simple file. So um, let's run through our same process. In this case, let's delete everything. And we're going to save this as our working file. Okay. All right, so we want to create a loft surface first, right? So in order to do that, we need to get these curve profiles into Grasshopper. So we're going to store them in a curve container. That comes from Pram's geometry curve. All right? And before I even get started, I'm going to group this. And these are going to be my curve profiles. Um, I'll just constantly be grouping and labeling objects, so, so it will be labeled in the file, and you can always see what, uh, what I'm trying to do. And the next step is I'm going to right-click and say Set Multiple Curves. I'm going to choose these five curve profiles in order, moving along the X axis. Hit Enter, and now those curve profiles are in Grasshopper. All right, now... I now have a list of five planar curves, right? Um, so I want to make one surface from that list of curves. So I'm going to look at the surface tab under freeform, and this is where I'm going to find my loft object. So here's loft, right? Curve profiles are going to be applied to the section curves input. And if you wanted to, just as you do in Rhino, if you loft a set of curve profiles, you have the option to specify if you want them to be loose or tight, straight sections, etc. But for now, we can just leave those options default. Okay, so now we have a surface. And of course, if we move any of the profiles or anything, our surface will update. All right, and let's go ahead and look at how we can uh, divide the two-dimensional domain of the surface up in the U and V direction. All right, well, for starters, let's go ahead and look at what the two-dimensional domain is uh, 
as we created the surface. So again, we're going to go to params, primitive, domain squared, and let's plug our surface into the domain squared object. And that's going to tell us that here we have a surface defined by 0 to 32 in the U and 0 to 3.95 in the V. All right, so here's where the surface, as it was created, has a kind of funky domain. And this is probably something that we don't want to work with. We probably don't want to work with 0 to 32 and 0 to 4. That doesn't really make much sense. So what are we going to do? We'll use our reparameterized trick. So let's go to geometry, params geometry, surface. Plug our loft in there and right-click reparameterize. So again, if I plug the results of that into my domain square, now I have a cl nice clean 0 to 1, 0 to 1, two-dimensional domain. All right. Manage my previews here. So I just have one presence. So this was my loft. And this is my reparameterize. Okay, great. So the next step is that um, from this two-dimensional domain, we want to break, break it up into segments in both U and V. All right, so now we're going to start to get into working with, actual, with the actual uh, domain objects, right? All we've done thus far is store domains so that we can see what the domain of a surface is. Now we're actually going to start to manipulate them. All right, so this was my... Uh, domain squared object. In order to work with domains, I'm going to go to the math domain tab. And if you look down near the bottom, you're going to see some options that look uh, just based on the icons uh, like what we're trying to do. We want to take a surface and break it up into smaller surfaces. And that object is labeled as the divide domain squared, and that divides a two-dimensional domain into equal segments. That sounds great. That sounds like just like what we want to do. So let's grab that object, drop it onto the canvas, and this asks for the base domain, how many segments we want in the U direction, and how many we want in the V direction. Well, we have our two-dimensional domain right here, so we can plug that into the I input. Again, this is divide domain squared. All right? And now we want to specify the number of segments in the U and V direction. So let's use our slider trick, and this wants integers. So I need a minimum of one division, and maybe I'll start with 15 divisions, and I'll end with 30 divisions uh, as my max. Okay? This is going to be my U div. All right, so I can plug that in to you. And another trick is if you have something selected, and you start to drag it, you can tap Alt, and that will create a duplicate. So that will be my V div, and I'll connect that to V. And now I have two sliders controlling the division of my domain square. Now, nothing is should be happening in the viewport. Yes, the alt option should still be the same for you on the uh, on the Mac. You may have to look at your uh, keyboard drivers uh, in Boot Camp or Parallels, depending on what you're using. Um, but it should be the same for those of you who are on a Mac uh, running Rhino. Okay, so um, nothing's happening in the viewport right now. Um, and that's, that's, that's good because we haven't actually done anything with our reparameterized surface. We've just divided the numeric domain. So if we divide the domain squared, if we look at this in a panel, it's just going to be numbers, right? And that's good. That's exactly what we asked it to, to produce, right? So this is going to divide up our UNV uh, domains into smaller segments, right? So portions of the original. Okay, so great. 
So with those domains, now we can say, I want to define that each one of those uh, sub-segments of our domain is actually going to determine where I, I basically split out a portion of this surface. So let's go ahead and do that. The way we do that is under uh, surface, utilities, ISO trim. So this allows us to extract an ISO parametric subset of a surface. Right? So we have a, a parameter space and we're defining a subset of it and that's going to allow us to define a portion of the original surface. So this is ISO trim. It asks for the surface and the domain of the subset that we want to extract. So we can plug those two things in from the reparameterized surface and the divide domain squared. Again, this is the ISO trim. If I manage my previews here, now I see panels, right? These are sub-portions of the original surface. So I could bake those, and we can take a look at what we actually got in Rhino. It may be a little bit easier to see. So if I bake the sub-surfaces, the isotrims, turn the ISO curve visibility off, there we have one surface, that one panel as a sub-portion of the original. Right, so each one of these is now its own surface. So if I wanted to, I can start to pull these out, pull them apart, etc. Right, and each one of these are kind of a trim of the original surface. Now, what does that give us? It gives us a curvy portion of the original surface. So we can call this a panel, but it only refers back to the original surface, uh, no matter what, right? Um, so it's, this isn't, uh, we haven't gotten to the point where maybe this is a piece of glass for a facade, or it's something that has to be planar, because everything is still cur as curved as the original surface was, and it's just trimmed out. Okay. So, again, we are dividing the numeric domain into smaller portions, numerically first, then using those to define how we should split our surface. Okay, so there were some questions about um, why the loft is labeled as an untrimmed surface. Okay, so whenever we create um, some geometry in Rhino, that's uh, surface geometry, right? If I were to do the loft command in Rhino, right, normal is good, okay. Here's my surface. This surface, um, is untrimmed. It is, it's been created and we have not manipulated it yet, right? We haven't like trimmed out a hole here or anything like that. Untrimmed means that the surface's representation is consistent with the numeric description of it in X, sorry, U and V, right? In contrast, if I had, uh, let's say a polyline, Right, and I use the planar surface command. This is a trim surface. Even if I use the, if, even if I did a rectangle, and did a planar surface, it's still trimmed. Right, because if I turn my control points on, if I turn my control points on, notice how they extend past the edge of the trim. And even the parts that are uh, kind of oriented relative to how the surface was created in U and V still are trimmed back from the control point. Right? So in, con in contrast, if this was our um, planar surface, 
and I turn the control points on, you see how the control points is actually external to the original profile? That's a trim surface. But if I were to do the uh, kind of similar, create a surface in a similar way, instead of doing a planar surface, if I explode this and I loft between this profile and this profile, this looks the same, but if I turn the control points on, that has control points beyond the edge, and this has control points on the edge and internal to the surface. So this is a trimmed surface, and this is a, an untrimmed surface. Okay, those, that's a really good question. All right, and so every surface, the space of it matter uh, is determined by how it's created. Right? So even though these things look almost exactly identical, they're actually different. All right, so you want to be precise with how you're modeling your surfaces. Okay. So we have subsurfaces with our ISO trim. Does anyone have any other questions about, um, about this exercise? Dividing a surface's numeric domain to get sub surfaces. Okay, so there was a question that says, are the UV panels always 90 degrees? And I think that um, what you mean by that is, um, are the, the edges intersecting each other at 90 degrees? Not necessarily. It may look like it, um, but that's not necessarily the case. And uh, for us, it may be the case uh, because our surface is relatively um, consistent in terms of its spacing, right? The profiles that we use to create our loft are relatively consistent. So if I start moving some of my profiles around, right, now we know we're definitely not going to be uh, close to 90 degrees, and our edges are even less straight than they were before, right? So it really matters. It depends upon how your surface is created in terms of what you get. And right now, all we have are a bunch of smaller, curvy surfaces, right? We've barely even entered into the realm of, of creating panels. Okay. Does anyone have, any, anyone have any other questions before we move on? So um, there's another question that says, uh, is the, the distance between the two UV edges, we'll say these U edges here, uh, is it always going to be the same based on this division? Well, relative to the space of the surface, yes. Relative to the space of the world, no, not necessarily. Right? The curvier the surface right, or if it's stretched, right, because essentially our profiles now, the control points are determining curvature. If I really exaggerate one of these, right, it's, it's pretty uh, clear when there is more exaggeration on surface that the distance in the world, let's say that that's five units, is not anywhere near the distance here, which looks like it's about 1.5, right. So again, everything here is relative to the surface. Uh, which is nice because we may want these kind of curvy uh, portions. We may want to be dividing this into strips, right, where it's continuous strips in one direction, um, et cetera. These are all relative to the surface, and uh, they're not rationalized in any way, except for the fact that they are consistently spaced in the UV space of the, of the surface. Okay, really good questions. All right, so let's uh, carry on. So I'm going to save this working file, and I think the next file we actually start from this one.